Hello and welcome back to a whole new season of Brewing Live. This is Publicis Sapiens' own technology chat show. My name is Neha Patrak and I'm your host. Over the last couple of years, I've had many interesting guests on this show. We've spoken about a lot of interesting topics. But today, I'm really excited to introduce to you our season opener for 2019 at Brewing Live. Let me introduce you to Mr. Rakesh Ravuri, who is our India CTO, as well as our Global Head for Engineering for Publicis Sapient. So on that, today I will be talking to him about cloud trends in 2019. Rakesh, welcome to the show. It's really nice to have you on the show and I'm really excited about this conversation. Thanks for having me, Neha, and uh, great to sort of uh, talk to our audience on uh, the technology for 2019. Rakesh, you know, today many large organizations are facing a lot of challenge, uh, you know, trying to keep up and innovate uh, when there is such stiff competition from digital first players, right? And in such a scenario, a lot of them have set off on the journey of digital transformation. In this context, uh, does our cloud technologies, what role does cloud technologies play? Is it just another buzzword or does it have a big role to play? Uh, that's a very good question. In, for digital business transformation is all about agility of business as you just talked about and being fast to respond to changes in business conditions, whether it is customer input or like changing business conditions or coming up with a new concept to the, uh, what you can say, your customers, like a business concept. Mm -hmm. Now speed matters in this and flexibility to sort of change and adapt to the various scenarios is a critical thing. Right. Now cloud helps this a lot because one of the primary reasons for cloud is it allows for like, uh, what you can say, uh, infinite scalability as people call it. You don't have to have a long lead time in terms of like procuring your physical machines. You can on demand scale up and down as per as your, your needs. Uh, one of the most important things cloud provides is the flexibility. People underestimate uh, the flexibility, they initially people move to the cloud for cost and scalability reasons, but flexibility is the one which actually gives digital businesses a lot of uh, leverage. Now all the digital businesses which uh, people know about are like typically startups and uh, the companies which have grown up on internet. Now they have used their flexibility to an enormous business advantage. Um, so having cloud gives the companies the flexibility which they need to make digital business transformation a reality. So what cloud uh, you know, trends do you foresee for 2019? So one of the trends which I see um, um, the clients adopting is like a hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud has become a reality right now. As people started exploring clouds and moving their workloads from the internal data centers to cloud, they realized that like it is not an either or solution, you need both. Uh, and there are specific situations where certain workloads make sense to still run in data center and certain things which uh, uh, make sense to run in cloud. Um, and also there are security considerations for some of the companies to sort of keep certain part of the data not in cloud but like uh, localized in the area which they sort of operate in and most of the government regulations right now also like recently India also came up with a regulation saying that you, you can't take your data out of India. Um, so if, if, uh, if there are companies which have uh, built their data centers in India, they can still keep their data in India, but like they can use the cloud for the online part of it or if they require scalability to run their models or like the e-commerce system, etc. So hybrid clouds is more of a reality and I see more and more companies adapting it in a big way in, uh, in the coming years. So that is one big trend. The other trend which I see is uh, the cloud provider start, uh, started investing in creating custom processors. Like Google created uh, a custom processor called a TPU processor, mm -hmm. which helps in sort of speeding up um, uh, training of neural networks, for example. Okay. So this is a very specialized chip. Uh, it, it can't sort of run general compute workloads, but it can run the neural network's compute load very fast. So it makes sense for Google to operate it because they have like huge amounts of uh, training from various uh, people who create these ML models. So for them creating a, a huge bank of neural chips makes sense. Okay. So I see um, and uh, recently I saw Amazon has invested in creating their own ARM chips to run web servers. Um, so this kind of trend I see more and more happening where people, cre uh, cloud providers can afford to create custom chips for specific kind of workloads because they have enough workload to sort of create that, which may not be possible in data centers or like uh, in, in individual computers. 
so that is a trend which uh, will become uh, more and more adapted. So you run a very large team, you right over here, uh, and we I know we have a a lot of people working on cloud. But what is Publicis Sapient doing to be future ready where this technology is concerned? So in Publicis Sapient, um, we have sort of identified cloud trend way back in like I think more than six, seven years back. Correct. And uh, we run a center of excellence uh, in cloud where we have sort of explored first creating our own cloud and sort of uh, creating um, environments flexible for our developers to create environments to create uh, applications for our clients. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we are also sort of investing in sort of learning uh, what are the trends in clouds. Like for example, I just talked about Kubernetes and all that. So we have like a lot of in-house exper uh, experts who know how to sort of uh, install, manage and uh, uh, use Kubernetes in the most effective way. Uh, that is one of the things which uh, our uh, COE concentrates on, but that is just one of the things. Like we also sort of concentrate on how do we run uh, machine learning uh, models on a cloud in a distributed fashion, in which the data uh, has to be effectively, uh, what you can say, without moving the data, how do you train the models, um, and concentrating on creating uh, flexible stacks, uh, on-demand stacks for our developer, because as I talked about, one of the benefits of cloud is flexibility. If that if that flexibility is not passed to the developer and passed to the operator who is like sort of managing the applications, you are not getting the true benefit. So how do you sort of uh, create um, um, frameworks, scripts, and uh, uh, utilities for people to sort of use cloud effectively? That is something which our cloud center of excellence concentrates on and constantly because this is a moving field. So every year we look at what are the trends, like where are the areas where we need to sort of uh, invest in our own learning and also uh, uh, invest in sort of creating tools and scripts which will help our project teams and developer teams to be fast in sort of delivering value to the client, right? One of the things which uh, we are doing is cloud is no longer um, a, a niche skill. Uh, as it becomes, it's becomes like a, every developer needs to have some level of uh, uh, expertise or like proficiency in cloud. Okay. So one of the things what we are doing is uh, we are training all our engineers uh, to have basic cloud skills. Uh, so uh, you will not find by the end of the year any engineer in Sapient who doesn't know uh, how to sort of work on at least some aspects of cloud. So because we feel that that's a mandatory skill for every uh, engineer to have right now. So, so Rakesh, do you want to kind of shed some light on some of the work that we've been doing in this technology for different clients? So we do, um, uh, almost every project which we do right now involves some part of uh, using uh, one or the other uh, clouds like Google, AWS or uh, Microsoft or, or you can say Azure clouds. Um, so uh, we do work all the way from uh, what you can say creating the whole application um, across cross region uh, e-commerce applications fully on cloud uh, or we do applications which are uh, having the uh, headless applications which we talk about where the, the front end part is running on the cloud and the back end part uh, is there in a data center. Then we have created uh, customer data uh, lakes and um, uh, what you can say, the CDP platforms on cloud which uh, where we used uh, uh, machine learning models on top of like large amounts of data um, and we created analytic platforms for them. We have also created um, uh, ML models uh, which run on cloud uh, using some of the cloud services and uh, some using our own uh, ML models. Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, so to answer the question, frankly speaking, I think we use cloud in every aspect of develop every aspect of development. Very rarely right now we are seeing any development which sort of purely runs in a data center. Thank you so much, uh, Rakesh, for being on the show. It's been a it's a, been a great chat. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you have any que questions, queries, anything that you would like to ask Rakesh, please feel free to add in the comment section below and do follow and subscribe to Sapien India we're on all social channels Facebook Twitter Instagram and YouTube so do follow us and stay tuned for the next episode of Brewing Live with that this is Neha Patak signing out